You're listening to In Joke, gallivanting through comedy every Sunday on Sim. Good afternoon, or good evening, actually. Evening. This is this is In Joke for your Sunday with Liam and Chavez. No towel here today, unfortunately. No towel. Not even any Emma to fill in. No, just we are uh, all alone. There is just no one the here dynamic beside us. Duo. Just yes. uh, Batman and Robin. <laughs> but who's Batman and who's Robin? Who can do a better Batman voice? Let's try. Let's see. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. I'm Batman. It's not who you are underneath, but what I do that defines me. I'm the hero of the needs, but not the one it deserves. Oh, it's pretty. Can we both be Batman? Yes. Depends. We can be very different types of Batman. It's like so many different exactly. Batman. Exactly. I will be the Adam West. I can do the whole. Oh, you got the whole 70s. Yes, yes. Yeah, that'd I like be beautiful. That I can do retro. that. Yes. Um, We've got a big show for you today. We do, we do. It's always a big show, but... uh, It's a bigger show. We've got a bigger show for yeah. you today. We've got Murray back. By popular demand, of course. Not contracted to come every two weeks. No, he's... By popular demand, he's by in. By popular demand, yeah. Yes. From those texts that we're getting. Oh, yes. How much they love Murray. Yeah. Um. So, Murray will be here. He's from the School of Hard Knock Knocks. And this week, he's going to he's gonna give us a comedy lesson. Uh, like he always does. But this week, it's going to be about audiences and taboos. So that could be interesting. Uh, he's also going to be sticking around for another segment to uh, to create a comedian's resume. So you can find out if you're the kind of person that, that could get into comedy. This is Sin News. International Women's Day was marked with protests and celebrations around the world. But inevitably, there was that one group of blokes asking, hang on, if there's an International Women's Day, how come there isn't an International Men's Day? (laughs) To those guys, I'd say, there is an International Men's Day, so why don't you shut up for one day? Yes, it is November 19th, so please get your facts right. With the latest news that liberals want to soften Australia's gun laws, has raised concern among normal human beings. Why would you want to fix something that's broken? Is the question most people are asking. But apparently to some, the US version of population control seems to be a better way to go. A large group of people, mostly mums in the age range of 40 and 50 years old, are making people on their social media cringe. With saying how sexy they find Ed Sheeran. And even though he is young enough to be their son, they will still like to do him. Well, according to every normal person, that's as creepy as a bunch of old males in their 40s and 50s saying they would like to get up on Ariana Grande. So can you please do us a favour and stop? Now to you, Mother, with the weather. Hi, Liam. Look, I don't know what to tell you. The weather's been all over the place lately. I mean, one day it's hot, the next day it looks like it's about to chuck it down. Look, I'd say just pack a jacket in case you catch a chill and and an umbrella just in case it rains. Better safe than sorry. Oh, and your father has the sport. Uh, thanks, honey. Look, uh, in terms of sport, the refs have been an absolute shocker. Look, he's doing it again. That wasn't an offside. Open your eyes, ref. Look, and the team's got no life either. Tackle him, Jeremy. Stop fo- pussyfooting around. Just tackle him. Look, I can't take this. I'm off to get a sausage. Back to you, Liam. Thank you very much, Mum and Dad. You were fantastic. Yeah, that was your joke news for the 11th of March, 2018. And in the studio with us, it's the man, the myth, the legend... The guy with the very silky, slick hair, yeah. Murray. Welcome, Murray. G'day, guys. Hey. How you going? Good. I don't know. Who am I talking to? Mum or Dad now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my split personalities now. You're, <laughs> yeah. just, you're talking to the sun now. I have no idea what offside <laughs> is, but uh, obviously you're catering for a different audience than Yeah, than I mean, offside is in, in sport, isn't it? Where yes. in AFL or soccer or something, when no, you go... definitely AFL. AFL. No, there you go. That's my point. Oh, there you go. So I don't, soccer. That, that just shows how much I don't know about AFL. Well... Yes, that so offsides in soccer when you know, you're in front. Yeah. If you're in front of the last defender, so it's only if you're if there's no defender between you and the goalie, and someone passes you the ball, you're offside. Yeah. So yeah. it's a great rule that they so get wrong most of the time. I actually know. Take... I actually know exactly what an offside is. Just want you guys <laughs> to explain it to me. Cool. You know, give you, give That's good go. content. Give go. Everyone wants to hear what the <laughs> offside rule is. I, I, I get it. Just ruins a game. You could have a, you could does, have a yes. good game of soccer, and it could be like 10, 15, right? Yep. But because of offside, it's one zero or zero zero. You know. Yeah. Anyway. Enough of football. Let's <laughs> talk about comedy. Okay. 
Right. So we're here again. This is yep. uh, number three uh, yes. in this uh, fortnightly get together to talk this about. This is your trilogy. The trilogy yep. so far. So uh, yes. it's going to. What is it? It's going to be like. Uh, well, eventually it's going to be like Police Academy. We're going to get to like eleven or something. Oh, wow. In this, um, in this conversation, again, you don't know what Police Academy is, do you? Um, all right, a little bit of Google search. <laughs> a lot of a lot of your references are, are quite like uh, before our movies. time. Yeah, sadly, <laughs> you and have often, no idea. often you'll make the reference and you'll be like, "You guys won't know this one, will you?" And like, no. Nah, yeah, well, I've, I've heard of, I have heard of Police Academy. Uh, yeah, it, it's bizarre. Anyway. Let's move on. So, we're, yeah. well, actually, it's a good it's a good segue because uh, audience, that's what we're talking about. I'm making mm. jokes that are completely going over your head. Yeah. Because I'm talking in my head to an audience that grew up in. I'm a seventy five model. Yeah. And you guys are ninety two thousand nineties. Yeah, nineties. Nineties. Okay. Yeah. And uh, again, you, because of that. So today, I wanted to talk in our little fifteen minute chat about two things. One being audience analysis, mm -hmm. and then the second one being taboos. Okay. In comedy, yeah, and uh, this this probably relates not only to being a stand up comedian, but it being any type of presenter, actually. Yeah. Um, whether you're an audience, you know, you're a DJ, or you're a, a keynote speaker, or you're going to give a presentation in microbiology, yeah. um, you, know, you know, second year. So what you're sort of saying is the content has got to be has got to cater um, towards the specific audience. Yeah. You know? and yeah. In fact, I've gone so far as to make an acronym of that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Now acronyms, of course, are letters that stand yeah. for a word, right? We so do love a good acronym. Good acronyms like CIA, for example. Or, yeah. yeah. LOL. LOL. There we go. Yeah. So I'm going to run through audience. A-U-D-I-E-N-C-E. -E. Easy to remember, right? Okay. Yep. So let's go through it. Um, the first one is attentiveness. So um, imagine you're a stand-up comedian mm -hmm. for a moment and you've just walked into a pub and there's the TAB on, you know, the TAB, the horse racing, yep. and there's two blokes at the pub, and the mu and the and the horse racing is up loud, and the bar manager goes, "There's a microphone, all right? Hit it off, start talking." <laughs> the attentiveness of that room is quite low. Yes. Yeah. How do you reckon you're going to go? Pretty shit. Yeah, probably. Probably. So, what can you do from the outset to increase attentiveness? Is it maybe mingle with those two blokes? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, is going, uh, yeah. Hey guys, how you doing? What, what are you watching? Oh, nothing much. Yeah. Oh, all right. Do you want to? Do you want to watch uh, some comedy, right? Or even talk to the manager and say, mate, do you mind t turning off the uh, the, the mm. TVs for a bit? Oh, nothing's yeah. more loved than someone who wants to talk to the manager. They are they are the most loved people <laughs> in the world. Yeah, exactly. So attentiveness is important. Um, again, like if, if it's a free event, if it's a comedy event that's free, people can walk in, walk out, attentiveness goes down. If yeah. they pay their money, mm. they want to see everything. Mm. They and, and there'll be fully attentiveness. Attentive. Oh, you always get one of those, one of the assholes who... Go there and just want to ruin the night for everyone. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we've got video of those guys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, a, so the second one is you, and that's understanding. So um, I've just mentioned the, uh, what did I mention? Uh, the, the police tab. academy. Oh, the police, yeah. yep. police academy, right? So you have no understanding because your demographic's different than yeah. my demographic, right? So if you're up there making police academy jokes to an audience of, of 90s born RMIT students, yeah. uh, it's, it's going to go over their head. But if I make a reference to the, I don't know, The Matrix, you guys get yeah, that, right? Yeah, we get that. Or maybe uh, Black Panther, which is the latest yep, everyone yep. knows about it because it's just come out. So the understanding level is you've got to, you've got to know what you're going to talk about. Mm. Again, so if, you're going to be, if I'm going to make jokes about shearing sheep, yeah. it's probably not as valid in downtown Swanson Street as it would be, say, in, I don't know, out in, out in Gippsland or somewhere. Yep, right? yep. Whoop whoop, <laughs> whoop, whoop. Adding, adding good whoop whoop. Yeah, for example. So that's understanding. Know what they know. Yeah. Demographics is the next one. So demographics is, you know, again, it, it's about their knowledge, but yeah. it could also be their upbringing. What sport do they play? You said, you know, you used offside, for example. Exactly. You know, so the demographics of Melbourne are different than the demographics of Sydney because yeah. they play rugby. So a lot of these things, they kind of overlap a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. bit. Yeah, so. Okay. A, a little bit, but um, demographics is also a, a, a male, female. Uh, yeah. Right, so understanding isn't related to male or female, but mm. demographics is. So, what are some of the you know concerns or issues that women have? So, Women's Day, for example, exactly. right? And the whole what was it, fifteenth of November? Yeah, nineteenth of November. Nineteenth yep. of November thing. There you go. So, that's a question that men would ask. Uh, the yeah. demographics, you know, well, yeah. Women's Men's Day, right? <laughs> well, there you go. Make that joke um, relevant. Yeah, and good, and it's also um, relevant to understanding. They've got to know what a women's day is, don't they? Mm. Oh, there's a women's day. Of course. <laughs> um, A U D. Next one is I. 
So the I is interests. So similar okay. to demographics, what are they interested in? You know, these guys, are they into football? Are they into um, you know, cricket? Are they into microbiology? Yeah. Are they into, um, I don't know, are they politically minded? Yeah. People. So if we can go back to that analogy you're making mm-hmm. about the two, you know, blokes at the bar. Yep. Um, and you've got to do the free gig and they're watching TV. Yep. You could perhaps, and you know, and they're watching horse racing, you could perhaps go up to them and talk to them about horse racing. Yeah. And then sort of, you know, get get them interested mm-hmm. and, and get them, you know, attentive and understanding and, and cater to their demographics. Demographics, you got it. You got it's it. Also, okay. It's also very hard, especially if you're a new um, comic, because no one really knows your stuff. So if you go to a um, just say fluffy um, comedy show mm. one day, you would not you wouldn't expect a um, him swearing and calling people assholes, yeah. and making sexist jokes. Yeah. But if you go to someone like Jimmy Carr and expect a show like Fluffy, yeah. But if you're yeah, if you're a new comedian, you did not know what to expect. Yeah, mm. that's right. That's yeah. right. The other problem with new comedians is they don't have a lot of material to mm. choose. They've got a yeah. five minute, ten minute, fifteen, twenty, thirty minute set, but it's yeah. that's it. And then yeah. when they walk in and go, ah, oh, it's two blokes and a TAB machine, mm. uh, I don't have any other things to do. So. And a lot of them, um, one thing I've also noticed, a lot of them try to be a bit too, a bit too edgy early on, mm. and they get more looking like a dick than mm. being funny. Yeah, absolutely. So you got to find that nice, sweet spot, and once you get more famous, you can kind of push the boundaries a bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And when people know who you are, they know yeah. what to expect. So, uh, yeah, Jimmy Carr is a good example of that. People expect him to be crass, don't yeah. they? Like if I walked on stage and went like, um, "All feminists are wrong," mm. yeah, I, I'd make you, me you, look bad. You haven't earned the right to yeah. say that. Yeah. yeah. Well, again, it depends on your audience. Mm. I mean, if you're in a shearing shed in Shepparton, yeah, and there's no women there, yeah. mate, you'd be a hero. The people would be buying you drinks. <laughs> you know, I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying I agree, disagree with that comment, but yeah. I'm just saying that mm. you know your audience yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, although you know, you walking into a room full of uh, militant feminists and saying that they might sh- they might cheer as well. They might go, high, "Oh, look high, at this guy! He's totally not d- serious." Highly doubt that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know you got a you know you got a cuddly face. You got a, a cute face. So I think you get Aww. away with it. Yeah. So um, environment. Well, that kind of alludes to my yes. little point there. You mm. might do stand-up comedy in a shearing shed. You might do it in a bar. You might do it in uh, a uni. cafe, a uni cafe. Yeah. I saw the Doug Anthony All Stars perform upstairs in RMIT in mm. the, well, it was the cafe at that time. I don't know what it is now. It's probably the girls' toilets. And it was uh, amazing, but they didn't have a stage. I don't even think they had a microphone. They just shouted very loudly to about 400 people yeah. who were sitting on the ground. And it was an amazing show to this day. Amazing. Number. A-U-D-I-E-N. Number. How many will there be? Are you going to have 15 people in a room? Are you going to have 100 people? Yeah. Are you going to have 400 people in a room? Was it going to be you and the guy that booked you in the room? <laughs> or you and the two blokes on the TAB, right? Yeah. Well, it could be my mum there for support, you know? Exactly. And so if you've got gags where you go, right, um, you, sir, in the audience, you know, if there's one of those yeah. audience participation gags yeah. and there's no one in the audience or there's only women and you need a man, that's going to change Well, you can do his mum and dad skit. Yeah. <laughs> people, people in the audience, yes! <laughs> Although that's a rule of comedy. You can't steal other people's material. Yeah. So you've done it. It's copyright. Uh, yeah, that's mine now. Uh, I apologise. <laughs> Two more. C. Cold versus warm. So is this a warm room? Uh, is has someone warmed up the room? A lot of a lot of comedians, the best comedians, headliner. That's the language. Yep. They come at the end of the night, not the beginning. Mm. Just like a warm up band, mm. like a like an intro band. Yeah. You know, for Ed, I don't know who's who's Ed Sheeran's uh, warm up band. Ah, uh, no idea. No I'm idea. Sure. Right. Well, I mean, it's a good gig to have, mm. but yeah. you're only there, you know, to make sure that when Ed comes out, everyone's warmed up. Yeah. 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 And often they're screaming, get off, get off, you know. Well, exactly. actually, um, I went to the footy show on Thursday and they had like a comedian guy doing the same thing, yep. doing the warm-up. Yeah, that's it. Mm. They want a yeah. warm, not a cold audience. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But of course, the guy before you, if you're doing open mics, for example, mm. or even if you're doing the gala here mm. in Melbourne at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival, if the guy or girl before you bombs... Then, then that's a cold room. You know, yeah. they might have said something that that was a so taboo, which we'll talk about. They failed to warm it up. Basically. They, it was warm, and then they put it in the freezer. Ah, uh, okay. They chilled it out because they said something that was inappropriate. You know? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So, pretty awful. The last one. The last one's very important. It's expectations, not expectations of the audience, but the person that booked you. Okay. If they're like, "Hey, man, you're on for thirty minutes," and then you go on for forty-five minutes, and they're waving at you, cutting their throat flashing yeah. lights at you, you're possibly not going to get the full payment or you won't get mm. rebooked as okay. well. So that's an example of 
audience. A U D I E N C E. Nice. There we go. I can't wait to forget that in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Wow. Well, yeah, you can. I think you can. I don't know. Is this this isn't podcasted, is it? It's yes, it is. Oh, oh, it is. is. Podcasted. Yeah, All you right, can so catch oh. us on our Omni yes. and iTunes. And if you rewind. Like to Podcast, yeah, yeah listen on the train, listen before you go to bed, listen in the gym. Yeah. Oh, it's okay. I'll play it when I'm asleep. Apparently, you learn better if you play stuff while you're asleep. There you go. So, so if you when wanna... I'm asleep, I'll just keep I'll play it on repeat. Yeah. I'll learn the audience. That's now, it. Uh, another thing you wanted to talk about was taboos. Yes. Mm. Um, what does this mean? Like taboo topics, topics to avoid, or or is there a way to to joke about some taboo stuff? Isn't um. Donald, isn't Donald Trump now a bit of a taboo subject that people to keep on making jokes about? Oh, it's a bit of a cliche. Oh, that's yeah. Sorry, yeah, yeah. So I got to confuse. Yeah, cliche. Yeah, cliche like taboos. Um, yes. You wouldn't want to uh, look. It's it's uh, it's been overdone. Yeah. yeah. Of course. Uh, so so and uh, Zach Dyer, who won the Raw Comedy National Final last year, mm-hmm. two thousand and seventeen, his main joke was about Pauline Hanson. Yeah. And that was fine, um, because Pauline Hanson had just come back into the limelight again. So it's mm. perfect timing. But then about three months after that, probably would have been a yeah. bit boring, o- overkill. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't do that joke very often. Uh, but what I'm talking about is taboos, as in what can and can't you talk about? Now, there's there's two camps here. There's people that go, you can talk about everything. Yeah. You know, from, from the most hardcore pedophile type jokes, rape and so on, right through to anything, right? Now, what I want to emphasize in this, because it is a bit touchy subject, is you're not advocating anything, mm. right? Um, whether you're a victim of any of those crimes or you know, um, whether it, it's, it's close to you, the idea is you're seeing that conversation through a different prism, through a different yeah. lens, mm. and you're making reference to it. Now, you, mm. in many cases, are joking about the perpetrator. You're making mm. the perpetrator. You're, you're always punching up in this case, right? Exactly. You're, you're perpetrating. The perpetrator is the, the, the person you're attacking. You're yeah. not in any way attacking the victims yep. of this as well. But by doing that, you can you can turn a situation that is, um, you know, a, a bit a, a sensitive, and you make light of it. I just want to give one example. It's, don't worry, guys. It's a it's a safe one. It's about Hitler. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it was always safe. Good yeah. topic. <laughs> it might be too soon to do a Hitler joke, though. <laughs> too soon. Yeah. Well, there's a there's a great guy. Um, one of one of our students who did the school. He Andrew Fenton. Uh, if you're listening to this, good. This I'm going to tell the world your joke. He tells a great joke about how he's a little bit depressed at the moment because he's just found out that um, that Hitler wrote a Mein Kampf uh, in his 30s and um, and he's just turned 39 himself so he's a little <laughs> depressed but then he's like but hang on Hitler was 43 before he tried to take over the world I still have time <laughs> you know and, and so you laugh at that you know it's yeah. not there's no yeah. you know genocide in there there's no massacre jokes and we are talking about Hitler mm. but that's a taboo subject yeah. don't talk about Hitler well I just did and you all laughed at it so who's yeah. the you know you guys oh, so nasty. a good example a few weeks ago with um, your um, news segment about the shooting in America uh, okay so basically yes. what I did was um I made a joke about um, mass uh, mass killings, mm-hmm. but um, I did it without talking about mass killings. I talked about um, that metaphor. Uh, no, used, it was a slight uh, sly, um, wink and nudge to. The, so we knew what he was, was talking about. Without so him I was saying talking it. about Harry Potter and uh-huh. and a, ma- uh, a mass killing in Harry Potter with wands and oh, you right. know, even in the last movie, like mm. there's a fight at Hogwarts, which yeah, right. could essentially be a school shooting, yeah, right? Sure. Um, so so I talked about that. Liam thought it was a bit too uh, soon. Too soon, but um, I sort of thought I wasn't actually talking about mass shootings, mm. but I was drawing a parallel between this sort of well, fantasy universe. The reality is someone's going to get offended. Yeah. And as a comedian, if we talk about it later on today, mm. what's what's a good uh, quality of a comedian? <coughs> wink, wink. It's always that you have to understand pe- people will be offended. Yeah. Pe- my Hitler joke just now, someone's going to be offended yeah. about that. Mm. But don't go into comedy because you're trying to please everybody because yeah. yeah. you won't be funny. Okay. Yeah. So that's that's taboo. And look, Mel Mel Brooks, uh, the, the famous comedian who is famous, and you're still looking at me dazed. Yeah. And he was confused. on Hotel Transylvania. We we did a bit of research yeah. this time. We looked him up. Um, we know who he is. It's a bit, yeah. He was on talk we, shows and our stuff. Our levels are like here now. We got this <laughs> exactly. Look, he talks about how uh, was it? Uh, I can stub my finger and it's a tragedy, but if you fall in a manhole down mm-hmm. a manhole, uh, it, it's it's comedy. Yeah. Uh, it all depends on the distance from the subject. So you being the victim falling down a manhole, mm-hmm. as long as it's not my my brother, my my cousin, my sister, you know, my, my mate. Mm. Yeah. As long as it's a, a guy in another place, and time, as you discussed, you know, too soon. Yeah. Uh, but then you know, 
there's been people look too soon is questionable. Um, mm. Sarah Silverman is a is a great American comedian, of course, who yeah. d- who doesn't know the word, doesn't understand the <laughs> meaning of too soon. Yeah, you know, she'll have the jokes written before you know that aeroplane's hit the <laughs> ground. You know, uh, but that's her style, yeah, and everyone yeah. knows that. And she gets off on offending yeah. people. So bringing it back to the whole uh, conversation of audience, um, I mean, I guess what's taboo depends on your audience. Yeah, definitely. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. if you went into a uh, retirement village and you wanted to talk about, uh, uh, you know, death, perhaps, <laughs> that might be a bit of a taboo subject, right? Because, yeah. you know, they're you all You're going to repeat stuff like five times. I'd be like, what? Yeah. You're going to die. What? Uh, yeah. You're going to die. What? <laughs> Wake up, Arthur. <laughs> yes. oh, yeah. oh, thank God he's on this <laughs> uh, But if you did the same sort of death mm. jokes at a university, everyone would be having a great laugh. Because yeah. it's not a thing that's that's relevant mm. in their lives. Ho- yeah, hopefully. Hopefully not. their granddad hadn't just died in a retirement village. But uh, yeah. <laughs> And then then like disabilities as well. You know, if you if again you've got to punch up. Yeah. You've got to punch up. Look, if you, if you've got a disability, um, if if you're old, for oh. example, if you of uh, if you've got a, a certain, you're not a minority. Sorry, you are a minority. Then well, you can joke yeah, about that. You can that. joke about it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I always tell my fiance, like, if we ever have a kid, and the kid has one leg, I want to call him Legolas. <sighs> Legolas. Yeah, Legolas. You know the, the guy from Lord of the Rings. Ah, uh, oh right, yes, right, Legolas, right. Yeah. because he's missing a leg. There you go. There's a reference you oh, don't get. Yeah. I was actually <laughs> thinking Toothless, which was, uh, which is the dragons cartoon, but uh, I've got an eight-year-old, so back, right back at you. <laughs> Double Murray, the Murray Double special, Murray. the ladies like to say. Double dose. Yes. Jeez. Did anyone spot the taboo in that last song? I, I threw it in there on purpose. I did, and I completely forgot. So, yeah. Craig McLaughlin. So, he's a bit Definitely, of a taboo yeah. subject at the moment. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Google yeah. it. Uh, and he was the lead singer, uh, Frank and Furter, in the Australian stage show of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. So, um, if you're a comedian out there right now, there's a lot of Craig McLaughlin jokes. There we go. Yeah. Another one bites the dust. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, Maury, so we wanted to do uh, another kind of segment with you. Yeah. Um, basically, we want to make a comedian's resume. Yeah. Um, and this whole idea has come from the fact that uh, being a comedian is often quite an informal job. So we thought, what if there was an ad on Seek.com? What if there was an mm. ad saying, comedian wanted, send in you know, uh, your resume or CV. Um, so we wanted to go through yeah. the different aspects of a CV um, to maybe help the audience members see if they're... If they're Cut out to be a yeah. comedian. Good. Hit it. All right. So, starting off, uh, skills and characteristics. Um, what kind of skills and characteristics would a comedian need to have? Well, I think on the resume, number one, at the very, very top, yep. would have to be hours of stage time. Okay. Right? Mic, mic time or hours of time that you've stood in front of a live audience. Yeah. Not your mum, not your, not your mirror, <laughs> not your walk-in wardrobe, but stage time with, okay. the, with the live audience. And that's got to be hours and hours. And in fact, it's got to be days and days. Yeah. You know, that, the golden rule of 10,000 hours. You heard that one? Anyway, um, Malcolm Gladwell wrote about it in a, in a, in a book. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Of course. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and 10,000 hours, although that 10,000 hours is, is about 10 years. Wow. And, and most comedians would probably agree. Oh, so it's not like when, you know, you get going for your life and you have to do the 120 hours and you <laughs> do the 120 <laughs> hours. Inverted commas, so all that. Yeah. No. No. Exactly the, that. You actually have to do the 10,000. Yeah, look, yeah. the golden rule is uh, we run a stand-up comedy school, right? Yeah. We're not going to say in 15 hours you're going to get your own TV show Yeah. as a stand-up comedian. No, it's, you've got to get that. So It doesn't happen overnight. No. It's, uh, it's a long... Years of struggle, arduous. struggles, yeah. and more struggles. Years and years, but you can compact that if, if you're smart and if you do the right things in the right order. Okay. You can do it hard or you can do it smart. Okay. Well, I think we'll touch back on that later when we talk about experience. Mm. Um, do you have uh, any other skills that yeah. you think? Yeah, so you, you're going to have to come up with a long, long, long list of jokes that you've written. Okay. And, uh, you know, we're talking, to be serious, like you're writing a joke a day, maybe two jokes a day. Okay. A joke a day keeps the doctor away. Yeah, well, hope, hopefully it attracts the audience too because then <laughs> you, can, you can go through and you can, in those massive amount of hours that you're doing, doing comedy, you yeah. can go, that joke doesn't work, that joke doesn't work. Elliot Goblet, uh, who I mentioned two weeks ago, uh, he performed in the gap that we haven't seen each other. He performed on stage and he did his material that he's been doing for the last 25 years, but he was throwing in new jokes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And at some point he actually told the audience, well, that was a new one and that's staying in <laughs> or ah, that didn't work, that's going, right? So you've got to keep writing jokes. And so if you're sitting opposite the HR manager in this fictional seek interview yeah you've got to probably you know one of those big uh ream printouts with the with the holes down the side from a 1980 science fiction you basically need a portfolio 
oh, well, portfolio. Yeah. But it's got to be, they'll, they'll weigh it on, they'll, they'll, boom, it'll hit the hit the desk and I'll go, ooh, that's two and a half kilograms. Yeah. Yeah. So that's got your, the job. That's yeah. your weight in comedy. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're, comedy. they're good jokes you have there. That's it. That's it. And then, and then they're going to say, and then, you know, the old joke, uh, what's your, um, you yeah, know, the old gag, it's, uh, uh, what's your weakness? Honesty. Oh, I don't think that's a that's a weakness. Oh, I don't give a shit what you think. Like, <laughs> that old gag about uh, about having skin deep. Like you're gonna take a lot of bashings, verbal bashings, yeah. not not physical bashings. Although uh, Jeff, Jim Jeffries got mm. punched, punched in the on face stage, yeah. in Manchester, and he used, and he used yeah. that to his advantage for his next comedy show. As yeah. Well. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And Will Anderson, mm. who's uh, doing his Melbourne International Comedy Festival, it's all based on a very bad experience he had flying to Wagga Wagga. Uh, yeah. and getting arrested. Well, going to Wagga Wagga is just a bad experience <laughs> by itself. Oh, look, I, I've been to Wagga Wagga and I love it. And uh, so take that back. I've never been, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. Oh, dear. No, Wagga Wagga, it, it gets a lot of... Uh, it's, it's, I don't know, what is Wagga Wagga? The, uh, the Adelaide of New South Wales, I guess, isn't it? I mean, it's so, it's good, rip- you t- so good you say it twice. That's what they're saying. <laughs> so thick skin. Thick, thick skin. skin. Like anyone in Wagga Wagga who just heard that, that, that attack... Is gonna, it's just and gonna I probably would have offended some people because that would be a yeah. tabu subject in their town. So, yeah. yeah, if you ever get a show, Liam, you're not welcome in Wagga. <laughs> Thank you very much. So how are you going to demonstrate in this fictional uh, metaphorical job interview that you've got thick skin? you basically mm. got to show all the hate mail that you've received as well. <laughs> so in your other bag is your hate mail, yeah. all printed out, and again, boom. That's... Or maybe some scars or something to <laughs> prove it. Yeah. Right. I, I think... Of all the jobs you could possibly do, stand-up comedy is one of the safest. Okay. You could fall off and break your ankle, but apart from that, Just yeah. make it a part of your routine. It's meant to happen. If you fall off the stage, you're meant to fall off the stage at your routine. Mm. Yeah. Play it off. Yeah, that, that's true. That's true. And now, you, uh, in the break, you actually asked, uh, people skills. Are people mm. skills necessary? Uh, I mean, I would say so, because you have to sort of gauge your audience. You have to uh, uh, interact with audience. I feel like, I kind of describe, I feel like it's a lot, of, a lot about being an actor. An actor... On stage, look like they're the nicest person in the world, yeah. and outside they're a bit of a jackass. Yeah. yeah. So you're, all you're doing is talking to people. But once the show's done, you'd be in your car, back to the hotel. Don't want to talk to anyone. Yeah, yeah. So I, I agree. People skills. I don't think people skills are necessarily mm. Im- as important. You've got to be funny first. Okay. And it's a monologue. It's stand-up comedy. Yeah. It's not stand-up conversation. Yeah. So, y- yeah, you don't have to be the nicest person on stage. Although, if you are you're going to get a lot more gigs because bookers and run, room runners and mm-hmm. agents and footy clubs are going to go, oh, I really like that guy. Like there's yeah. a guy, there's an uh, Aussie comedian, guess what? He's from Wagga Wagga called Dane Simpson. And he is one of the nicest comedians you'll ever meet. Yeah. Super nice. And when he asks, oh, could I come in and do something? Or oh, I've got any shows that I can, you know, do a show. Oh, everyone says yes to this guy. Yeah. You know, so yeah. so that plays to your advantage in the end. It does, depending or, on the kind of comedian you are. Or you can just are. be a giant ass kisser. Yeah, well, yeah, he's no ass kicker, but kisser, but he's a very nice person. Yeah, and uh, all I'm saying is, is not the most important thing. Yeah. Still, that stage time is okay. Um, the last one though, reputation, and not reputation by what your mum thinks of you. <laughs> reputation okay. by Instagram or Twitter for the, some of the older comedians yeah. or Facebook. There are there are comedians today who are getting. Uh, agents, uh, you know the big the big agents, the tokens, the A list, the the creative artists, the um, the mushroom comedy. Yep. They're getting these agencies to book them and, and actually man- manage them, represent them, mm. because they've got fifteen thousand, twenty thousand yeah. or so, more. I mean, followers. social media. That's what you'd see on on, on a PR person's uh, yeah. resume or something. But you're saying social media skills also are very much part of the comedy world. Absolutely as well. important, yeah. and and for good or bad, it sometimes means that people don't come from mm. the stage time. You know, they haven't yeah. done the the two, three, four years of open mic hardship. They've actually come from two, three years of YouTubing. Yeah, yeah, and but they all meet in the same point, which is uh, you know a perfor- a show at the Melbourne mm. International Comedy mm. Festival. And if you're like you know, oh, who should we see today, love? Oh, I don't know about you, but uh, this guy's name seems to ring a bell. Yeah. And why does it ring a bell? Because his or her name is all throughout social media. There you go. Mm. Anyway, moving on, a uh, few more you know subheadings. Uh, education. This might not be something that's uh, that's necessary for a lot of comedians. I mean, a lot of comedians learn on the job. Um, but also there are options to learn, like your school. Of hard knock-knocks. Oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, they, look, they can... We're, again, we're not going to make a, a, a boring person funny, but yep. we will make a funny person hilarious. Okay. And what we do do is... <laughs> do do. <laughs> <a joke. laughs> 
poo jokes, right? <laughs> is that we make that f- sort of four years, that traditional four years of the hardships of open mics and yeah. building relationships and writing jokes, we turn that into sort of two years. Okay. Uh, just for evidence of that, we've got a, a guy that did our course in March 2016. His name's Gavin Semple, and mm. he is uh, in the Victoria Raw Comedy Final. Um, and, you know, he, he could win and go to the Nationals. Yeah. Yeah. Another guy um, who I actually saw at Raw Comedy in one of the heats, um, and then I realized that he was part of the School of Hard Knock- Knocks, is uh, is Denver, Denver G. Christian. Denver G. Christian. He's you know what G guy. stands for? No. Gorgeous. <laughs> oh, yeah, he says that at the start. He yeah. Does, yeah. yeah. Oh, he's he's great. Uh, Denver's, Denver's weakness, Denver, if you're listening, this is your weakness, but you, you know it already. Is he's just not doing the stage time. Like, he's, yeah. he's got the personality. He's a lovely guy. He's the second yeah. loveliest person next to Dane. But he's just not getting out there. He lives out in the suburbs, east, uh, southeastern suburbs ah, of Melbourne. Okay. He's, he's not directly on a train line. He's not doing the hard yards. Uh, but he's doing... He's very funny. Mm. Very, very funny. Okay. So I guess that brings us to, you know, the stage time. That games brings us to the experience section on the resume. Yeah. Um, how are you going about... Uh, getting that experience, um, and also maybe you could recommend some uh, some open mic nights. Um, yeah. Oh, look, there's plenty of uh, there's plenty of open mic nights. Just do open mic Melbourne. Google search that. Mm. You'll get a whole list. There's I think there's a, an open mic for almost every night of the week, except maybe Friday or. or um, That's or, odd. Yeah, it's a weird yeah. one. Or it could even be a Saturday. I'm not mm. sure. Um, um, they're, they're, look, there's there's great, you know, Gorilla, for example, or mm. Funny at the Brunny, or Attic. Well, I've Attic's heard about uh, Spleen. Is Spleen, yeah, Spleen, just on Burke Street. Yep. Uh, that and that's a very popular one. And if you get in that, you've got to line up for. You've got to line up. I think at the beginning of the year to get a gig. Oh, later wow. in the year or something. Oh, it's wow. it's it's a tight one. It's probably one of the hardest ones to get into. Uh, Butterfly Club. Uh, th- th- look, there's lots. Um, you, as a comedian, don't wait for someone else to book you. Mm-hmm. I would go out and approach footy clubs. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I sit in the production side. I'm, I'm a producer of comedy. And so I select people and I invite them. And they're so great, grateful. And I say, mm-hmm. oh, do you want to be the middle bracket? Oh, that'd be amazing. I'd love to do that. Yeah. Because they're so desperate for more stage time. Yeah. But while I'm a producer, what I'm su- suggesting to other people is go mm-hmm. out and approach your union you know, at, at university or your footy club that you used to play at or... You know, if you're involved in any kind of charity, yeah, and even if it's for free, go out and do it and just get that stage time. Yeah, so yeah. it's all about putting yourself out there. Um, and yeah, just taking that leap, really, and and getting that five minutes down so it's tight. Yeah. Yeah. When I say tight, that's language that means a joke every twelve to fifteen seconds. Yeah, that people laugh at. Yeah, not not just nod their head at. Mm. Yeah, not a not a kahoo, oh, ha ha, it's hilarious, but just a ha ha, yeah, yeah, a minimum <laughs> of that. Yep. There you go. Uh, last um, one. Yeah. Um, with normal with uh, normal resumes, you got your referees, so you got maybe your old manager. Yeah. That. What about a comedian? Would you have maybe um, a former booker and the person you wanted to show with? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Other comedians. The so as we discussed uh, earlier about bands, you know, a band has a warm up band. Mm. Comedians out there, they want to have a comedian that warms up the audience, but they mm. don't want that comedian to be too funny. Uh, right. Yeah. So Will Anderson isn't going to book, uh, you know, a, a top line comedian. You know, Jim Jeffries. Mm, right. Yeah. The two of them are never going to be on the same on the same poster. Yeah. Because they're as funny as each other. Yeah. What you need is so as a performer, a stand up comedian who's growing and coming up the ranks, yeah. is you definitely make friends with your Dave O'Neills, for example, or yeah. your your Jeff Greens or your Steve Hughes and and mm-hmm. so on, and you go, you know. I've got a gig. I've got a gig at a footy club. I'll, it'll pay you this much money and I'll be your warm-up act. Yeah. Right? And then you build a relationship with those people. And there then the next go. time they've got a gig, they'll turn around to you and go, you know, you were pretty funny that other time. Yeah. And I know Dave O'Neill does this all the time. You know, he pays it back. You know, you get me a gig, I'll get you one. Um, and I know you're not as funny as me. I mean, they don't say that. <laughs> but, but that's So that's like the so, sort of the politics... Yeah. Um, uh, it's like, it, look, it's like anything. It's uh, like you don't want to have a friend, in, uh, especially if you're single, a friend that's more attractive than you are. <laughs> exactly. Like you want to be the better looking friend, especially if you're single. Yes. Yeah, so it's kind of that, yeah. Yes, but you've got a fiancé, so we don't need... Yes. yes. Yeah. 
cross that. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm the bad looking one out of the two of us, you know, <laughs> to keep her on her toes, like you said a few weeks ago. <laughs> I love you. Please don't dump me after that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's vicious. And, uh, <laughs> that's a taboo, by the way. Never <laughs> bitch about your, your second half. Oh. Yeah, yeah, your yeah no, that's just awkward for everyone, man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's all the time for we have for today. Yep. I told you it was an action-packed show. It was, yeah. We went a bit uh, a bit over time. Yes, but um, I mean, time is never enough. Um, I won't be here next week, but Tao will be back. I, I should be back, yeah. You haven't missed the show yet, haven't you? Uh, I think I missed the first one. You did? But uh, since then, it's just been uh, a you're, straight, you're straight just been run. perfect, yeah. absolutely perfect. Because that's all the time for we have for that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for joining us here on Injake on Sin ninety point seven. Love you. Bye.